Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask, as always, that your name be glorified. We ask that we may serve you as we continue through the book of Tobit, and we look more at what Tobit has to say for us. We also uh, ask that you lead us to do everything that you call us to do today, and you open us to those who you send our way. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, it is Tuesday of the uh, ninth week of Ordinary Time, and this is the day we're celebrating. It is Tuesday, Tuesday, so it's not a memorial or anything else. Although there's always a Saints Day, but it's not um, a, a memorial per se. Um, what we would call a man was it? Uh, um, oh, I forget the word. They taught us this in the seminary, and now I forgot it. But um, anyway, it, we're celebrating it as Tuesday of the ninth week of Ordinary Time. By the way, of course, Sunday, we celebrated Holy Trinity. And and um, my homily, I always, on Holy Trinity, focus my homily on how this is an important day for science and faith because what does the holy trinity teach it teaches that there were three persons in one god what does that mean my point and it really shows that there are realities in our universe beyond us beyond our ability to understand them that's why i'll never be an atheist an atheist says well you know prove to me that god exists no prove to me that we have the ability to understand everything in the universe you can't because there are things that are part of our reality that go beyond us. Is there? Can you hear this alarm in the background? Oh, just stop. That's that's a truck backing up. I'm always amazed by uh, when I'm trying to record the show how much sound comes in from the strip. Yep, there it is again. I don't know if you can hear that. How much sound comes in from the street? Either I I've tried to do the show and they're cutting down trees, they're digging up the street, they're backing up trucks, they're doing the. Not that it happens all the time, but you know, it's just when it's almost like I'm recording the show. So someone out there someplace is saying, let's say he's going to do the show at this time. So let's Let's make sure we dig up the street at that time. Now, I know no one actually does that, but it's just like, you know, as I'm trying to record the show and I hear this this truck beeping, beeping as it's backing up. I don't know if you heard it, but I heard it. So I'm thinking that maybe you're hearing it, too. Um, so we look at this uh, interesting uh, uh, story that comes in from Tobit, because what basically happens is you have a setting of the scene. The New American Bible Revised Edition talks about it's kind of a novel form, so it tells the st- uh, tells a story. So your first chapter, it tells you what kind of person Tobit is. And in the second chapter, we learn that he is blinded. I, You know, I always get nervous when I say this. He's blinded by falling asleep and bird droppings fell on his eyes and they caused cataracts and as the story goes he couldn't see for four years and so he was blinded he went to bed and he woke up blinded because of bird droppings following on falling on his his eyes and this leads him to get a reputation for not being such a nice guy because he's a big fight with his wife over whether or not this goat that she went and bought was actually stolen. And, you know, he doesn't trust his wife, which is, you know, number one, obviously it's not a good thing. But um, secondly, one of the problems with that is back, this is back in the day. Um, In the old days, now, I'm not fully aware of how things were in the Jewish community. I'm sure they were similar to what you see in the Christian community during the time of Paul, where it was the rule that the wife had to obey her husband. And it was the role of the wife to do what her husband said. You can actually see that in even of our late times from television programs from the 1950s. They would have to ask their husband permission if they could work. And there was an episode of, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe it was an episode of the Danny Thomas show. And if I'm not wrong, the guest stars on the show were Lucy and Ricky. 
I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And that's where it came out where, you know, they had to ask permission of their husband. But at the same time, of course, you have Lucy and and uh, and the wife of of Danny. What was Danny Thomas's name? Um, in the program, it was another it was another name. And um, they had to ask permission, and somehow they didn't do it because they did what Lucy said in the whole bit. But you have to remember, this is back in the time where, you know, a wife would have to ask permission of her husband if she could work out, if she could. It was it was a time that, that I can't so say that I remember that within my house, but I definitely remember seeing television programs that would reflect on that. And you can now see, and back when I was growing up, but you can now see uh, programs and shorts from that time that indicate that. This was a lesson in school, how the wife was supposed to be, how the husband was supposed to be. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. And don't forget our website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Dot com and you can check out our website you can check out the archives of the show uh, for the last week you can uh, check out our substack newsletter you can send us feedback you can donate to us you can do all kinds of things over there at Catholic audio media. Dot com. Well, actually, I just uh, during the, the break, I decided to look up a little bit of the Danny Thomas show to f- try to remember what his name was. And I can't for the life of me. It's not in the it's not from Wikipedia, but it was produced by Desilu Productions. And uh, so, yeah, it would have been Ricky and Lucy who owned Desilu uh, Productions. Oh, I just found it. Danny Williams and um, Danny Thomas and his playing Danny Williams and Marjorie uh, Lord playing his wife, Mrs. Williams. Let me see if I have a name there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it was uh, Marjorie Lord as. Yeah. OK. As. As the second Mrs. Williams on the program, the first Mrs. Williams was Jean Hagen. And, um, you know, I remember watching that program. I know I'm going a little bit on 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 the edge here uh, on an on a obstacle, what do you call it, a tangent. But um, I remember when on that program, Danny Thomas did an ad on why it's a good idea to install seatbelts in your cars. I don't know if anyone who is from some of the uh, younger generations than the baby boomers such as myself who are listening, and I know they are, and others from the baby boomer generation, remember that seatbelts were not, they were an option in the car. They were not mandatory. And uh, you could have them installed in your car, but they were an option. It was actually Ralph Nader who required, who uh, finally brought to a point that required that seatbelts uh, are put in cars. So that goes back some time. And that also is that tail end of the time where you have the, the man is the Uh, master of the house he is the king of his castle is an episode of the jackie gleason um, honeymooners where ralph is trying to enforce this on the wife and of course um she jane meadows is just kind of laughing at him in this but it's important because that was part of the culture and it goes back many years it's not that that uh, that, you know it doesn't happen you have what you should have is a more cooperative um, a cooperative style that you find in many houses where you have the husband and wife working together, which is the way it's supposed to be. That's actually, if you listen to what St. Paul teaches, many say St. Paul teaches that, you know, um, 
what's it, uh, wives be submissive to your husbands. But what it really means, because the next line is husbands love your wives. It means that you need to work together within the context of the Lord doing the will of the Lord. Now, I've worked many years with the Latino community, and I know that the person who walks in to the, the women in the community and says, I am the man here, I am the priest, I am the deacon, I am the bishop, I don't care what it is, and you will do what I say does not last very long because it's really very cooperative. You have to work and you work cooperatively. Um, something I've really tried to teach within the American community to uh, many of the people who uh, are uh, throughout throughout the um, the area, you know, that's the role of the women in the church working with the man working with the priest not being submissive to him and uh, that's important it's an important understanding when i worked with um uh, various religious orders in the past of nuns um they would we would work together if i get called on a sick call i would call the nun i was working with and saying we got a sick call do you want to come with me and we would work together in visiting the family i would do the anointing she would do some of the pastor work behind the scenes and it would happen all the time it was very very good we'll talk more tomorrow but in the meantime have yourself a blessed day I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.